Alright guys, uh, I'll uh, get started. So, this is uh, week 8 and you know, we are at the very end of the quarter. There are uh, 3 more lectures after this. No, actually 4 more lectures after this. And uh, there's a, a project which is due on Friday. And uh, the end term date, which is, you know, always a uh, concern for uh, especially the spring quarter. So we want to keep it on June 5th, which is uh, the last Friday of the quarter. So you, you can finish up and people who want to leave for internships or whatever they want to do after that, they can do it. If you if you have you know some uh, very serious reason where you can't take the interim on this day, then we will try to accommodate you. But unless and until there's a uh, you know, very specific reason, do try to take it on uh, the state. So we'll keep it on June 5th uh, evening. Is that okay with us? Okay. okay, so, you know, last time we discussed, we were talking about shading, and uh, uh, I showed you these two schemes. One is uh, portrait, and the other one being landscape. And I think you guys preferred landscape for from from the shading perspective, right? But now let me ask it again: If this panel was made using a thin film technology, then which scheme would you pick? Portrait. Yisheng point. So let's say you know, there's shading. So there's let's say a, a beam of a shadow of something which covers the cell like this. Right? No, I mean, which one? Do you, why would landscape be there? You can pull up. Uh, So these are the cells, so you know, okay, let me repeat the question since few people have joined in. So I started the class with this question, you guys can sit in and then you know, can ask it again. So we were talking about sh shading, uh, you know, in one of the previous lectures and I showed you these two different configuration of the panels, the portrait and the landscape. Uh, configuration and you guys preferred landscape uh, you know from the perspective of shading but now let's say this panel is made up using a thin film technology then using a you know either amorphous silicon cat tail or one of those technology then which orientation would you prefer from the perspective of shading and to give you some visual guide I said okay so this would be let's say there's a pole nearby and it casts like a shadow like this which would be better for uh, from a shading perspective? Yeah. The portrait or landscape? Okay, and why would that be? Because it's opposite of the other. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I don't know, see, your, your, your reasoning is right. Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, let me draw the cells actually that might have. So, the cells are each of these long things over here, you know, each of these things is one cell. So, I've drawn over here only four cells. Right, similarly over here are also these four cells which are series connected. Right, so in looking at uh, this picture, now 
this kind of a sharing would essentially decrease the efficiency of each of these cells and similarly over here as well it would decrease the efficiency of one of these cells you know in this case in the in the landscape case so you want uh, does anybody want to add to that argument that ben said i think he he presented it correctly you are confusing between series and parallel uh, you have a series of string connections in So you can consider it, sure, so yeah, I can consider each of these cells like this. Is that what you're saying? Or? compared to you know if i contrast it to what we discussed previously that had uh, crystalline silicon multiple of these cells so in that case each of them was essentially a separate diode right versus over here i have only one single cell over here so in that case if i was blocking part of it that whole series which was connected was getting disturbed versus in this case i only have a few diodes which are connected in series so it's better to you know reduce the efficiency of each of them slightly versus black out one completely if i black out one completely like it's happening in this case then you know it will degrade the efficiency of this whole string versus in this case all of them will reduce equally or you know each of them will degrade equally so for this at least the case that i would draw over here it seems like the portrait scheme might be better for uh, from the shading perspective as ben was saying yeah you should because in crystalline silicon or in crystalline technology you don't have this long cell you have these individual cells which are series connected as you have hopefully you are doing in your project as well right so each of them is a separate diode versus in this case this whole big thing is one diode right so that's the difference so you can think of uh, you know that uh, if if you had if you had uh, a shade like this in a uh, in a crystalline silicon thing right then you will be blocking much more number of diodes over here right versus over here you are blocking just one diode So the difference over here is that there are less cells and there are bigger cells which are series connected. Right? So hmm? uh, then I would prefer the other orientation. Yeah, if if the shading was uh, like this, right? If the shading was like this, this part was getting shaded, right? and i would of course prefer this one but usually the shading occurs at the very bottom of the panel so it would if it's a series of panels as we were discussing the last time then the shade from one typically comes at the bottom of the panel so it would shade out this part of the panel right if if these are installed in a utility farm or where these are you know all placed next to each other then the most common cause of shading is shading from one panel to another one if there was a random shading so then the next problem set which you will do is it asks you to simulate a shading in uh, you know one of the uh, like a realistic environment where you have a house and a, a water tank nearby 
what the shading we do. But I'm just assuming the case if they're connect, placed in a farm somewhere, so all of them are placed next to you. So we talked about cattle already. We talked about cattle. Now the next thing which I want to talk about is the CIGS uh, technology or SIGS cell. You know, it's the colloquial name for this is SIGS, and uh, it's a really hard field, and uh, that's uh, very well represented uh, in this uh, in this uh, list of companies which have. Uh, it was really hard field actually so I would say it was really hard field back in 2008 to 2010 so more than I think more than 500 million dollars of venture capital money was invested into these uh, Tencent startups a lot of them are located in fact here in the Bay Area so this nano solar was in Palo Alto it's now in San Jose Mia Sol is also here in the Bay Area Surrender is actually no more so Stein is another startup which we will hear from uh, next uh, this coming Wednesday. This is another Bay Area startup. So, you know, there was a lot of promise uh, in this technology, and there was a lot of uh, VC money which uh, which uh, uh, came in into this technology, and a lot of it was driven by these champion cells which were shown in the lab using uh, these six cells, and they could achieve efficiencies of more than. Uh, uh, more than 20% at that time and you know people were very excited that uh, you could make them on like sheets of aluminum you could print them uh, in, in a you know in a very low cost uh, manner and that got a lot of people excited at that time and also keep in mind this was the time when polycrystalline prices were very high so people were even more uh, happy to invest into these technologies so uh, the first question that you should ask is, you know, why do you need four elements? So C, I, G, S, C is for copper, it's not carbon. I is indium, G is gallium, and S is selenium, right? So why do you need uh, all four? It's basically a 2-6 semiconductor, so why not just use two elements and make like this, right? Copper selenide, copper diselenide. So the reason for that is the band gap for this copper diselenide is very low. So it comes out to have a, uh, you know, it uh, sorry. The band gap for this is uh, is not suitable for solar energy conversion. So resistivity comes out to be very low. So what people do is they make it uh, CIS, so, you know, copper, indium, selenium. So if you do that, then your band gap comes out to be somewhere around one EV. But that's also not optimum for optimum efficiency. You need your band gap between let's say 1.3, 1.4. So if you add gallium to it, that increases the band gap, and your band gap becomes close to 1.4. That's your optimum value. So that's why you need all four of these elements, C, I, G, S. And the optimal ratio of this uh, you know, indium versus gallium, it comes out uh, the efficiencies are optimum when this ratio is between 30 to 50%. So you need 30% of gallium, and the rest is indium and uh, then you get the best efficiencies uh, in this cell. But think about the poor material scientist, you know, who has to now grow the, or, you know, who has to fabricate this uh, cell, which has this absorber layer has four of these materials, copper, indium, uh, gallium, selenium. All of four of them have different melting point, different temperatures that they evaporate at. So you can think of, you know, his life figuring out how to grow and uh, make these uh, uh, ten films of uh, CIGS. So the band gap of this uh, CIGS, uh, it's uh, you know it's close to 1.4, and you use uh, it in a configuration where you have a cad sulfide layer and then a CIGS layer. Where this cad sulfide layer uh, act as a it acts as a selective contact, so it has a band gap which is higher than the higher than your uh, six layer and it helps in collecting these electrons. At the same time, it repels these holes away from the interface. So just like we saw for cattle cell, it essentially provides a selective contact for your electrons. Now, the only uh, another thing you can use to your advantage is that, remember I just told you that the band gap of this can be tuned by tuning your indium and gallium ratio. So if you are really inclined and you, are, you, know, you want to demonstrate the best efficiency cell, at least in a lab, what you can do is you can tune your indium percentage. So you can start with something which has a film which has lower indium percentage higher, here, over here, 
and it has a higher indium percentage over here. So the band gap would be something like this as you uh, as you move along this fan, and that would further help to accelerate your electrons. Or that would remember if this band diagram is like this, electrons have to travel down the hill. So it would further help in uh, collecting your electrons or separating your electrons and holes from each other. Yes. Yeah, so it depends upon uh, uh, it depends upon the Fermi level actually. If this is P doped, right? So your Fermi level stays constant, right? And your most of the change is seen in your uh, in your conduction map. But if this same semiconductor was uh, n type doped, right? Then your Fermi level would be somewhere over here. It would be fixed with respect to the conduction map, and you would be seeing the change more in your valence band. But yeah, so it, it since this material is P-type doped, uh, it's 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 occurs to be that way. And also it depends upon you know how your con when you're changing your indium percentage, where is the change occurring? Is it occurring more in your conduction band or it's occurring more in your valence band? So in this case it turns out to be that it occurs more in your conduction band. <coughs> So these are some funky stuff that you can do if you really want to you know, help uh, optimize your efficiency in that uh, champion set. <coughs>